Well, we have hundreds of homeless in Madison. Some say up to as many as 2,000. It's a major, major problem. There's no place legally for people to sleep at night in Madison outside. If you're homeless and you're trying to set up a blanket somewhere, a pillow, technically you're breaking the law. You know, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I'm a fairly, I'm a fairly smart person, you know, I had a college education, you know, and I would reflect almost every day, you know, how did I get here? How did it, you know, what could I have done differently? The lowest point was, you know, I've got all this work experience, trade school degree, some college, you know, applied for a dozen jobs in Milwaukee for factory work, still couldn't get in. The idea of people just having to shuffle and hide to try to find a place to sleep at night, it just shouldn't be that way. There's got to be a better way. We wanted to have an environment where you know, people could have a stable, safe place to keep their things, warm bed at night, a community of support, and we thought that that would promote people being able to get a job, and sure enough, like in the case of Russ, one of our first members, he had been unemployed for a long time, living out of his car, became a resident here, got a job. A lot of the homelessness I see is what's happening on State Street or around near the Capitol. From that perspective, there doesn't seem to be a solution. You know, I see it every day, and um, that's hard to deal with and hard to see. Um, but coming here, I see a solution, and I see something being done about it. Occupy got this property, and this is uh, Owen Village. It's uh, short for Occupy Madison Village. And um, this is my permanent home from right now. This property back in 2014 was an old mechanical gas station shop like 50s, 60s model. Nothing maintained, nothing kept up the code. Oh, it was a hellhole. It was an uh, old a, uh, auto shop. And it was constant noise all the time, even on early Saturday or Sunday mornings they were working out there. So yeah, it was just an eyesore and it just obnoxious. We had a new roof, new ceiling, new lights, new electricity. Um, the shop got volunteered um, items as wood making, cutting um, equipment. Um, retail store. We have uh, potlucks every Saturday that anybody can come to. Also, um, kids groups. We have Girl Scouts, um, boy, uh, boy Scouts, the Boys Club. So a lot of it is volunteer time, like Linda, my wife, and I went over, and we said, we'd like to, you know, help. What can we do? Well, they just happened to be talking about doing these jewelry classes, because they have a, a shop there where they sell jewelry. Then we found out that other people had interest in other things like gardening. So there are now people that live in the community that go over in the spring and there are plant, uh, there are those plots out in front, put the dirt in, you know, work it up, and they plant things. So it's feeding right into what's going on in the community. That was always part of our, pro part of our consciousness is that we want to make a beautiful place. We don't want it to affect people's land values. If anything, I think it might have improved it. There's no, I don't think there's enough data out there, but we've built a very good place where neighbors are spending time here. So um, I sort of joke around that, that we've been visited so much that we actually might be adding to the Madison economy. You know, we've become sort of a, uh, a, a small tourist attraction. You know, I'm in the process of, of selling my house, trying to sell my house right now. In, in an adjacent neighborhood. And I can tell you that the house prices in this neighborhood are rising faster than in my neighborhood. I just actually had my house assessed last year for a mortgage and it's gone up since I purchased it five years ago, so. You know, each year I get a tax bill based on the appraised value of the home. I've never had the bill go down, it always went up. Obviously there's objections, obviously there's concerns, obviously there's language that needs to be written to bridge the gap between what we have and what we need to have. Um, but we need to have, we need to start as a fundamental foundation of we should and can do this um, and we just need to figure out how as opposed to we can't and we mustn't do this and we just need to figure out how to stop it. I mean, we had people wondering, are, are my children going to be able to ride their bikes? Uh, do I have to keep them locked up? Are, am I going to find beer bottles lying around? Are we going to am I going to find needles in my in my trash can, right? Are, is, are there going to be burglaries? When people were asking these questions and raising these objections, they weren't being 
completely hateful and irrational. They are, they are homeowners in a safe neighborhood and they want to keep it a nice safe neighborhood. So I respect that. So what we did is as we heard their complaints and their concerns, we, we one by one, we addressed how do we deal with that? How do we make sure that the people living here um, are, uh, uh, make this a, a richer neighborhood? We don't allow drinking, you know, storing alcohol, drugs, using drugs, prostitution, stealing, robbery, weapons. We don't allow none of that. No swearing, you know, no yelling, no misconduct. We have a misconduct policy. We're not just having parties every night. And I think you'd be amazed at how quiet it is after nine o'clock at night. <laughs> but I think in the first year, um, there was a lot of concern that police calls would go up. We had no police calls. In our first year, zero police calls. And uh, the police themselves were very happy about that and several of the officers have come by to tell us that they were very happy about that and they liked what we're doing. A couple of months ago, because of somebody else asking a question about something totally unrelated in the neighborhood, I looked at um, calls for service in the general area and I found what you've already heard from uh, the folks at the village that there have been very, very few calls or even incidents now, um, I mean remarkably low, like hardly registering. The people here don't want drinking binge parties. They don't want noise at 3 a.m. I mean, they're the people here that have jobs. You know, uh, Gene has uh, a, a young son, you know, 12, his 12-year-old 12 son comes, I think he's 12, comes to visit here every weekend, and this has to be a safe place for his son. And so it is in everybody's interest that this is a, that this is a safe uh, place to be and to, to live and to work. They're good neighbors. They're quiet, don't bother me, so to me that's a good neighbor. I park next to them every day and I walk out to my car late at night and I feel like they're just a positive member of the community and a good neighbor. So that's, that's how I feel about it. I mean, they're doing their, doing their thing and I'm supportive of that. And what's the consensus of the council now? Given, now that you've had an opportunity to see uh, the village in well, operation? I'll be perfectly honest, I don't talk to them about it. It's just a non-issue. It, it, it exists. It's part of a fabric of our community. We have a lot of other conversations the council has, um, you know, in other neighborhoods and, and other communities. And this one just isn't rising to any awareness level just because it's, it's been successful and it's been doing its job. I think after a year, uh, our mo many of our most vocal critics have now come around and said, yeah, I was, I was skeptical, I was concerned, but it, it, it's actually, they're doing a nice job over there. It's actually a nice place. And that's exactly what we wanted. That's what we were going for. I was initially opposed to it, just a knee-jerk reaction, a kind of a not in my backyard kind of thing. But after I've seen what they've done, it's, it's a beautiful thing and I like it. We feel good about it. I hope it grows. I hope other communities can see the value of providing a place for people to get back on track. And who knows, you know, this program may take off and be other parts of the city, I don't know. But I'm really glad it's here. We're starting something. We're starting to help the homeless people have housing. We want to change the city. We want to make it safer. You know, I can go to work and come home and I'm home with my new family and I love it. I can't even begin to express. I mean, I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity. Um, I can't even begin. I don't even have the words to express how great this is.